He's a crap game operator. Why do you say that? Well, he ran his, most of his money comes from crap games in Jersey. I mean, if that takes a genius to get money out of a crap game, come on, there's been geniuses in this city for a uh, hundred years. That's what gambling is all about. You win some and lose some, but it's really a trap. They were giving you thousand dollar bills and that's how you, you, you ran to the casinos. You wanted the perking up of your heart and the, the feeling of a different kind of life. I must sound like a baby up here. I haven't smoked, I haven't drank, and I don't take drugs, okay? Well, I have other problems, but I can't tell you about them. <laughs> Trump has an addiction all his own, cash flow. And to satisfy his craving for cash, he went where the money was, to Atlantic City. Atlantic City liked the fact that Trump seemed to have a clean image with no prior ties to the gambling industry. Donald's problem is a simpler one. He wanted to become a super citizen. He wanted to get to be the beneficiary of a privilege granted by the state of New Jersey, namely a gaming license. And therefore, you have to, it's like going to confession, you have to prove that you are an absolute first-class citizen. That was a little hard to do considering his connection to Daniel Sullivan. To the Teamsters Union, Sullivan was a reformer. To the law, he was a man with a criminal record. To Donald Trump, though, he was an asset on his construction jobs. And he was also co-owner of the land on which Trump wanted to build his first casino. One of Sullivan's partners on that land had links to Nicky Scarfo, the crime boss of Atlantic City, currently in jail. Sullivan and his partners had bought the land just one week before they sold it to Trump. Trump owned the land, but he said he wouldn't build until he had a casino license. The Casino Control Commission granted it to him in record time. He had almost everything. He did not have the uh, financing for uh, the Trump Plaza, and at that time, uh, you know, he was in the process of building the, uh, the uh, Trump uh, Tower in New York, and he was under construction with the... Uh, uh, Hyatt, uh, New York. Trump soon found a partner with deep pockets. This time it was Harris. For half ownership, Harris put up $50 million. And for that, Trump had to take second billing. He'd soon buy Harris out and rename the casino Trump Plaza. Just like going to confession, casino applications must be renewed every few years, so casino owners must stay clear of associations like Daniel Sullivan. That leads to questions about Trump's relationship with this man, Joseph Wechselbaum. To Donald Trump, he provided helicopter service to Atlantic City. To drug enforcement officials, he was a sometime middleman between Colombian cocaine suppliers and American drug dealers. In 1985, he was indicted on drug and tax conspiracy charges and eventually served 18 months in jail. Trump proved to be a loyal friend. After Wechselbaum had been indicted, Trump rented him one of his New York City apartments on a part cash, part barter basis. When Wechselbaum got out of jail, he moved into a Trump Tower apartment owned by his girlfriend. Others wouldn't have Trump's luck with the Casino Control Commission when it came to investigating their ties with undesirables. That's why Baron Hilton struck out. The Division of Gaming Enforcement then recommended licensing, but the Casino Control Commission said no, accusing key executives and one of Hilton's lawyers of being too close to organized crime. The license was denied. Trump purchased the hotel and opened it as Trump's castle. Now this is a castle. Everything is just bigger, much bigger, and frankly more expensive. But it's something that when it's done, if done right, is a wonderful investment. Trump only saw the cash coming in. Early on, a casino analyst named Marvin Rothman saw it pouring out. While cash flow numbers sound very impressive, uh, it's very important to be able to cover your debt service because in fact, cash flow doesn't mean anything if you can't cover debt. Covering debt wasn't on Trump's mind. Having it all was. So Trump's debt grew larger as he relied on the magic of junk bonds instead of partners to finance his habit. But this was the mid-1980s. Trump was on top. Every hand was full of aces, and he kept going. Trump began playing a new game, weaken your competition. First came Harris, his former partner. He bought its stock, and the company spent $30 million buying him out. With the profits, he went after Bally's. There was litigation on both sides, and in the end, Bally succumbed to his apparent green mail and paid him off. He skirts the law in the sense that he goes right up to the edge and sometimes over it. Um, he uses his enormous economic clout 
Instead of using his Bally profits to pay down debt, Trump went after the biggest prize in town, the unfinished Taj Mahal, owned by Resorts International. He began buying resort stock. The rest of the deal was pure Trump. Within a matter of months, he had convinced Resorts Board of Directors to permit him to put into effect a management contract, uh, which was worth something like $60 million to him. Nothing like this has ever happened before. And in essence, they were paying him to supervise his own investment in his own company. Everybody was just aghast because there would be nothing, you know, nothing left for the shareholders. In return for the management contract, Trump was supposed to finance the completion of the Taj Mahal. He never had any intention of doing that until he owned the company outright. The contract bled the company dry. Stock prices fell, but they weren't low enough yet for Trump. So he tried something else. Resorts hired bankruptcy counsel, and Mr. Trump walked them through the unfinished building. Within hours, all of Atlantic City, and indeed the entire financial community, knew that Resorts had consulted bankruptcy counsel, and the rumors were rampant that Resorts was going into bankruptcy. There's no doubt that this had a very intimidating effect on the Casino Control Commission. Today, Donald Trump sat in the audience as state officials considered his request to gobble up even more. Trump's next frontier, the biggest of them all, the resort's Taj Mahal, still under construction. You ask yourself, why did the Casino Control Commission approve it? I think they were literally bowled over by Donald Trump and by the utter fear that they had that he would walk away from Atlantic City, that he would let this hotel under construction remain unfinished, that it would be another blight on the Atlantic City landscape to have uh, New Jersey's tallest building sitting there as a skeleton for everybody to see. Everyone was happy about the deal except the shareholders. Before Trump's deal could be completed, out of the West came what looked like a white knight. It was the biggest high-stakes game on the boardwalk in years. The players, entertainer Merv Griffin and billionaire businessman Donald Trump. The prize, Resorts International and the unfinished Taj Mahal. The winner, some might call it a tie. Griffin gets Resorts, Trump the Taj Mahal. I love that perception. I won, I won, I won. He is still, you know, a year later standing in New York. Going, I won, I won, I won. He wants to make sure everybody in America knows he won. And so I look at him and say, Donald, you won. Now do you feel better? Now eat. He had called me after he had uh, uh, negotiated to sell the property to uh, Merv Griffin. And he said, didn't I do, didn't I do the best deal? Didn't I get the best of Merv, Marvin? And I said, Donald, I think it was great that you sold the property, but I think you made a mistake. I think, I think buying the Taj Mahal is, 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 is going to be a very bad thing for you. Well, what do you mean? I mean, I think the Taj Mahal is going to be the greatest success ever. I mean, you just don't understand. And I said, well, I, I can't understand why you want to operate three different properties in Atlantic City. Uh, how do you differentiate the marketing? And the Taj is going to be such an expensive property to operate. Marvin, you just don't have vision. You just don't understand. This thing is going to be a monster. Having won this battle, Trump thought he could do anything. He plunged in and bought two more Atlantic City properties. Now he really needed cash, so he invested in another competitor, hoping to get bought out at a profit again. This time, the Casino Control Commission made him back down. It threatened to take his licenses if he did it again. That cut off his cash supply. Mr. Trump, or for that matter, any other casino operator, may not use a subsequent sale or disposition to purge himself of the taint created by the purchase of an interest in a New Jersey casino competitor or its holding or intermediary companies. This was the turning point for Trump, but he didn't see it. His sights were set only on the opening of the Taj Mahal. One step beyond your wildest imagination. A billion dollar dream come true. Donald J. Trump's Taj Mahal, the eighth wonder of the world. An eighth wonder wasn't enough. Trump needed a miracle, a business that would throw off enough cash to pay his enormous debt. The regulators were turned off. The banks cried for blood. 
Trump gave it to them. He personally guaranteed the loans and put his properties at risk. Trump saw only the upside. Marvin Rothman saw it differently. If the company doesn't generate the kind of wins it takes to pay $95 million debt service, to pay $125 million to the payroll and payroll expenses, if we got into a bad economy and all of a sudden the Atlantic City market s stopped growing, I think that would be catastrophic to, to, the, to an operation like the Taj Mahal that was so leveraged in debt. Trump went ballistic over a similar prediction in the Wall Street Journal. To appease him, Rothman's employers, Montgomery Jenny Scott, fired him. The analyst sued. Not only did he win, the judge awarded him $700,000 in damages. When the Taj Mahal opened in the spring of 1990, it didn't solve Trump's problems. It made them worse. Within six months, the once invincible Trump had to file for bankruptcy and give his bondholders a one-half ownership in his crown jewel. By now, Trump was in danger of being washed out to sea on a wave of debt. His castle was being held for ransom, and Trump Plaza couldn't bail him out. Trump's addiction for cash had brought him to the brink. I, in a way, get high from what I do, okay? In a way, that's my, and I look at it as a positive addiction, because addiction can be positive. The casinos are tough nut. They're tough. They're really tough. I wish there was a chance of beating them. I'll be the first in line, but there isn't. You gotta die broke with the game.